Welcome to the final installment of this amazing Disney Best and Worst Animated Movies Cash Grab episode. I'm not going to bother with intro jokes. Let's just get started with the 15 spot on Movie Fuse. Cinderella is the reason we can't have nice things. The story certainly doesn't scream girl power as we see a young woman working to the bone day in and day out for an evil stepmother and her terrible girls. Although saying evil when it comes to Disney stepmothers is a tad redundant. They're all awful. Good old Cinder seems more than content spending her days feeling bad for herself and talking to animals. It's not until a fairy godmother comes along that things turn the corner. So fairy godmothers are good. That's the exception. That's the loophole. Here's the thing. The story paints our protagonist in a pretty pathetic picture by not having her stand up for herself, but everything is so delightful that I can look past it. The mouse subplot with Lucifer, the crappiest cat on the planet, the music's incredible, the stepsisters are delightfully twisted, and the ending is one of the best moments in Disney princess history. When she pulls out that second slipper she had in her back pocket, it's been here the whole time! He's got to have a sword! The story of King Arthur has never been cooler. An unsuspecting boy nicknamed Wart pulls out a sword that was previously impossible to remove by even the strongest of men. He aspires to be a simple knight squire, but when a wizard makes himself known, there are far bigger plans for Sir Wart. Merlin is the reason to watch this crazy little film, doing his best to teach the boy that an education is far more important than biceps. Merlin tries some very unconventional methods to showcase his wisdom, from transforming Wart into different animals to using spells to prove his point. There is an unsettling amount of squirrel love being had, but the final duel between two powerful wizards is a sight to behold. The closing moments are a joy as well when Wart once more pulls the sword from the stone, securing his place as the new king of England, King Arthur. Well done, gang. Let's go home. I didn't know how to close this one out. The snow glows white on the mountain tonight. Not a footprint to be seen. Kingdom of isolation and it looks like I'm the queen. Let's get down to brass tacks. The movie makes very little sense if you take even a moment to think about it. That being said, I don't care. The catchy music, the great animation, the fun characters, and did I mention the catchy music? All make up for some of the plot holes and unexplained magic nonsense. Do you want to build a snowman? Yes, Olaf. Yes, I do. And I can't wait for the sequel. Plot holes never bothered me anyway. It's amazing that it took Disney this long to make their own superhero movie, especially after The Incredibles came out and was such a success for Pixar. The city of San Fran, Tokyo is pure eye candy, and Hero and his robot companion Baymax are a blast to watch. I could have just viewed Hero hustle people out of their money during illegal robot fighting matches, and it certainly would have been more pleasant than the death scene to follow. Another intense and sad flick from the House of Mouse. It's got your twists, it's got your turns, it's got your highs and your lows. It's everything you expect from a good superhero film. Reminiscing this and that and having such a good time. Like Peter Pan, Robin Hood has certainly had no shortage of movie adaptations. Actors like Kevin Costner and Russell Crowe have donned the cape and bow, but nobody has done it better than Brian Bedford. He voiced the Sly Fox in the 1973 animated version. So many memorable humanoid animals here. King Richard, Sir Hiss, Little John, the Sheriff of Nottingham, Lady Cluck, and a fantastic opening number by a rooster. It's a very funny, very cool version of Robin Hood, and it's still my favorite. Who was the gladium, gladiator? The son of a Greek god is stripped of his immortality and sent down to Earth where he must host a mediocre YouTube show for very little income. That's my story, and it's eerily similar to Herx. I'd lie if I said I wasn't mildly attracted to Meg, and her song is a top 10 for me when it comes to cartoon movies. Sometimes on lonely nights I picture her singing that song about me. No chance, no way, I won't say. I know she's not real. <laughs> That's silly to think. I'm 90% confident she's not real. Danny DeVito might be the best coach a demigod has ever had, and James Wood as Hades is one of the best cartoon villains. I give the guy two thumbs way up! 
You're going to add flames, right? CGI flames to the thumbs, like in the movie. Cool. Disney's Lilo and Stitch. Ohana means family, and family means nobody gets left behind. Nobody. That's the message of Lilo and Stitch, and one that resonates from beginning to end. This movie's so far from the norm, and I love it. Lilo and Stitch are the best buddy duo. Stitch is borderline insane, destroying everything in his path. Lilo has a very dark yet loving personality, which gels well with Experiment 626. She's able to relate to him on a certain level and manages to calm his programming. The Hawaiian setting is terrific, and the watercolor art style is a nice change of pace. The Elvis music, the alien search party, the sad backstory, it all works. I gotta love that Disney charm and their obsession with killing off family members in the background. Tangled was Disney's first attempt at a fully CG Disney princess movie, and they succeeded on all fronts. Animation is vibrant, music is just as strong as ever, the main protagonist Rapunzel is cute and bubbly yet strong enough to stand her own ground, especially with that mean hair whip she rocks. The villain is delightfully devious and just like Scar, managed to carry out and succeed with their plans for many years before finally getting taken down. Flynn Rider and his hijinks with a horse named Maximus are always a treat to watch. There's a fun self-awareness about the humor too. People need to let Frozen go and see the light, and that light is tangled. Yes, I played off songs from both movies. Highly original. Subscribe. You know what they say. The seaweed is always greener in somebody else's lake. You dream about going up there, that'd be a big mistake. I guess someone forgot to tell Ariel that or she wasn't paying attention when Sebastian busted out that beautiful number because she had no problem trading her soul to an evil sea witch for a pair of nice legs. Oh, you need to attract a good looking human you met for all of five seconds? I have an idea. Go seek out the sketchiest, scariest looking merwitch you can find and give her your voice for some flimsy promise. Ursula could have given her giant mammoth legs for all she knew. Elephant Titus, what was stopping her? She's a sketchy individual. Ariel may be deep in the ocean, but man is she shallow. So many good songs. Under the Sea, Kiss the Girl, Part of Your World, one of the best lineups ever. So she's a bit dense. We all know someone like that, and that certainly doesn't hurt the story. In fact, I think it makes it even better. Disney's back in full force, baby. Sorry for calling you baby. In another anthropomorphic picture. Is it anthropomorphic? Fuck, God. Rookie cop Judy Hopps has a lot to prove and not much time when she's dropped into a missing animal case. She elects the help of a slick fox to help track down a victim. This mystery thriller is full of humor, suspense, and a lot of heart. There are so many unique animals in this world director and writer Byron Howard built. The sloths are definitely a favorite of mine. I dug the whole case solving aspect of it. Questioning perps, stopping crimes, chasing sequences, etc. It pays great respect to the old Disney legacy and it stands up well on its own two paws. John C. Riley's Ralph wants to be a hero. He just doesn't realize heroes come in many forms. Ralph is determined to get a medal to prove he can be more than just a bad guy. The real world video game cast goes a long way to cementing this as legitimately the first really good video game movie. Mortal Kombat previously held that award in my eyes. Vanellope and Ralph have an amazing father-daughter relationship that blossoms by the time the final act is in gear. I would say the focus on Sugar Rush is a bit of a bummer since there's so much to explore in this great world. A small hang up to an otherwise fantastic flick. Ralph Ralph may be programmed to wreck it, but he's also capable of great things. Great message, great movie. Boom, baby. This cult oddity will no longer be lower on most people's lists, and that's fine. I'm not here to judge, I'm here to educate. If you haven't seen Emperor's New Groove, turn this off immediately and rent it or buy it now. That's far better than what I'm shooting out. A great combination of dry and visual humor, jokes for adults and children in tandem. The clever wit of David Spade works very well against John Goodman's gentle tone. There's nothing bad in this entire film. Yzma is a hilarious villain, especially in cat form. Kronk hits legendary status in terms of amazing villain sidekicks. He does his own theme music, and he speaks chipmunk, impressive in its own right. I can't say enough nice things about it. The intentionally stupid backdrops, the in-joke meta references, the tiered comedy, and the dumb grin it puts on my face from beginning to end easily get this at the four spot. All I can say is boom, baby. Like A street rat has never looked so good.
especially when he's leaping from rooftop to rooftop, stealing a piece of bread to make it through the day, all while singing a magical little song with his best friend, who happens to be a monkey. It's complicated. But he really is a diamond in the rough. And I'm pretty sure Rihanna's song is about him. Yeah, he truly is a prince of thieves. Jasmine's all right too. Jafar is a pretty ruthless villain, although his magic staff is pretty sketch. What can it do and what can't it do? Apparently whatever the script wants. That cave of wonders is amazing though. I want to spend an afternoon there just rummaging around. The reason to really watch this over and over is for Robin Williams' Genie of the Lamp. The music is no slouch either. Prince Ali, A Whole New World, Never Had a Friend Like Me, I Think I Had This Soundtrack on Tape. Bottom line, Rihanna had it right. Aladdin shines bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. When I was a wee little cub and not a full-grown Adam Bear, I liked The Lion King for different reasons than I do now. I thought Simba was awesome. Now I think he's a cocky little runt. When I was a kid, I thought Nala was a feisty young girl that didn't put up with any nonsense. Now I think she's a cocky little runt. When I was a kid, I thought Rafiki and his fighting moves were awesome. <laughs> Now I still think they are. They are really awesome. The big change is Scar for me. I almost root for the guy now. Scar is basically the Loki of the family, just kind of crapped on. He doesn't have the stature of his bro, but he has all the brains and one hell of a voice. Be Prepared puts every other villainous song to shame, not to mention the amazing lineup of songs all around. The Circle of Life, Just Can't Wait to Be King, Hakuna Matata. Can you feel the love tonight? Then there's the myriad of good supporting characters such as Timon and Pumbaa, the hyenas, Zazu, and many more. When it comes to animal stories, The Lion King is just that. Pause for drama. Still pausing. King. Nailed it. A tale as old as time. A song as old as rhyme. A princess in the hiding, usually with her nose stuck in a book. A total bro douche trying to win her heart. Actually, I'm not sure he's interested in love at all. He just needs his trophy wife. He has his trio of floozies at his disposal, but those aren't the bucks he wants to mount on his wall. This is a deer reference again. It's not nothing to do with anything else, kids. No, 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 no. He's after the best in show. Unfortunately for him, Belle has much bigger aspirations. She wants more than this provincial life. Her stupid inventor dad ends up being the answer to her dreams when he takes the wrong trail and ends up being prisoner by a beastly man. Or would it be manly beast? Either way, he's more attractive in beast form. Can we all agree on that? His daughter comes to his aid and sacrifices her future for his by taking his place in the dark castle. Things quickly take a happy turn when inanimate objects start talking to her and making her feel more at home. They can sing, they can dance. After all, miss, this is France. They invite her to be their guest and the beast realizes this is his final shot at finding true love. There are a lot of inspiring messages here from sacrifice to seeing below the surface of an individual to the real beauty inside. The music in this is the best of the Disney catalog. Yeah, that's quite the achievement. That's very high praise. From the opening number to the final attack on the cast, the ballads never quit impressing. Beauty and the Beast is my number one pick for all these reasons and more. And to make great things even better, the Queen of Canada, Celine Dion herself, does a rendition of Tale as Old as Time. It's pure bliss. It's pure bliss. This has been quite the journey, hasn't it, gang? We've shared some laughs, we've shed some tears, we've had some fun. We covered the good and the bad, and hopefully we met somewhere in the middle. Is my ranking perfect? Of course not, there's no such thing, but it works for me. Disney has been delivering magic on the big screen for almost 90 years. My math is bad, so don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on anything, really. This is my list, and I stand by it, and now it's your turn as always. Post a comment, give me your gigantic list if you think you can handle it, and remember, this is more than just reviews, this is Movie Feuds. Whew, that was intense. Good show, everyone. Thanks for the help. Yeah.